All right, folks, it's straight up 7 o'clock Central Time. Welcome to The Whale Trade. My name is Doc Severson. This is my favorite swing trading strategy. So I'm very pleased to be talking to you about it tonight. I could probably talk about it for hours and hours and hours, but unfortunately we only have an hour tonight to talk about this. So I'm going to fill tonight with as much as I can give you uh, during this time. So you guys know the, the drill by now, if you've been around for a while. You guys know the routine. Please treat this like a business. This is not entertainment. If you treat this like a hobby, it's going to be the most expensive hobby that you can possibly imagine. So please take everything that I talk about tonight very, very seriously. Treat it like a business. Now, about Theotrade, if you have not experienced Theotrade before, if you don't know who we are, we are a trading education firm based out of Scottsdale, Arizona. We specialize in education for options, futures, and stocks. We are started by professional traders and managed by professional traders who are first and foremost experienced trading educators. We are not an advisory service. We are not a brokerage firm. So although we provide the best trading education in the business, your results and ultimate responsibility are your own. Individual trading results will vary. Trading has risk. Trading involves real money. Theotrade is here to help you mitigate the risks in the market while learning a skill that can last you for life. Now, you know the other rules. No wagering, no gambling on tonight's presentation. Please respect our intellectual property here. Please do not copy, reproduce, or distribute this material in whatever form. If you would like to, you're welcome to uh, ask for permission. And here is the contact information. We uh, would love to hear from you. So who am I? Well, believe it or not, I actually have a full head of hair. I choose to look like this although most people do not believe me. I am the options, technical analysis, and NLP means Neuro Linguistic Programming Content Provider. That's a long-winded way of saying trading mindset. And I've been with Theotrade for the past year. It has been an honor to be on this team. I consider myself to be an innovator. I think everybody has to be an innovator in today's market. If you do the same things as everybody else, You'll get the same results as everybody else, and we know what those are. I have been doing this now for 21 years, 21 years, and I've been, um, I've been a mentor for the past 12 years. Uh, initially, I was a reluctant mentor. I was forced at gunpoint to help those in need, and actually, I've grown to really, really enjoy it. it um, there's nothing like it to be able to make a change in people's lives by what you know and show them the way. I also have 11 years of Thinkorswim platform experience, which can come in handy from time to time. And I wrote a book uh, about a year ago. I called it Hacking the Holy Grail. So that's on Amazon if you're curious. It is out there and um, it's, uh, it's a quick read. It's about 200 pages. So the Theotrade team is not just me. It's not just one person. We have an entire team of people that are out there. Okay, uh, Don Kaufman is the co-founder, and you may have heard of him before. He used to do the swim lessons on Thinkorswim and was joined in agony by Jeff Bierman. So those two used to tangle and fight all the time, and it was quite amusing. So Jeff has been doing this for 25 years and has joined us through Theotrade over here. So I'm delighted to have Jeff on board with us. Steve Slim Miller is an industry veteran that many of you have heard of before. He's been doing this now for 43 years. Tony Rago is our resident NASDAQ futures trader, has been doing this for 24 years. And we also have uh, articles that are written out there by John Galt. Who is John Galt? We can't tell you, but he writes some great articles. So what I liked about what I'd like to talk to you about tonight's presentation, with him means what's in it for me. What's in it for me? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about what is the whale trade? What is the whale trade? I will tell you what market conditions cause this effect for the whale trade. I will talk to you about what strategies are the best to trade for the whale trade. I will talk to you about timing the entries. I will talk to you about timing the entries for better edge. I will talk to you about scanning for candidates so you can watch more than one stock and have the machine do it for you. 
And then at the end, I'm going to wrap it all up with next steps. Now, what I'd like you to do is for housekeeping, yes, you'll get a recording of tonight's session. I'd be surprised if somebody hasn't already asked that. Yes. Okay. So, yes, you will get a recording of tonight's session. I typically go through the material fairly quickly. I want to respect your time. Here we are on a Tuesday evening in the middle of the week. Some of you have just come in from shoveling. So I want to respect your time. Some of you are on the East Coast. This starts to get late, so we're going to finish up by the top of the hour. Okay, so please do me a favor. Hold your questions until the end of the session unless you have something that's more admin related. We do have staff online. Actually, I believe Don is on with us tonight, and Jeff is with us. So we have experienced traders that are out there that are happy to help you with your questions as you go through this. And, of course, we will, um, when I get to the end of my presentation, I will stop to answer questions at that time. Now, you were distributed a copy of the webinar, Wookbrook. I had the, the pleasure of doing this. I, I attended somebody else's webinar a couple of years ago. Actually, it was a webinar on how to write a book, and uh, and it was really a very different experience when you had the workbook there and you were sort of filling it out as you went along. It kept me focused because typically what I do is when I attend a webinar, I have it running in the background and I'm walking around my office doing whatever, and I end up not getting anything out of it at all. And so what I found was that going through the workbook as I listened to the presentation really gave me a lot of bang for for my time really gave me a great payback for that. So I'm hoping that you have the same experience with that. It should be fairly easy. If you have any trouble with the answers, let me know and I can help you fill in the blanks. Okay, so here we go. Part one, what is the whale trade? What on earth is this whale trade thing? So let me begin by asking you, how often has this happened to you? How many times have you seen a stock just going nowhere? So you see this thing, and perhaps you were watching it over here, back in this area, and then it came back down, and you basically just ignored it at this point because it's just going nowhere. And frankly, nobody's paying any attention to it at this point at all. So the stock is just sitting there winding, going nowhere, and suddenly it explodes higher. And all of a sudden it's, of course, on everybody's radar. Everybody's talking about it. And there you are on the sideline, you're not on board. So I, I hear people talk about this all the time. The move came out of nowhere. Man, where did that come from? It came out of nowhere. How could this happen? And it's because nobody was watching it. All right, so bam, out of nowhere this thing comes. Now, what I've also found is because I'm Mr. NLP out there, Psychologists have determined that the pain of missing out on the move is greater than just taking a simple stop loss. Can you believe that? The pain of watching a move like this, of being on the sideline and missing a move like this, is actually greater than taking a stop loss. I bet you guys can believe that, can't you? Doesn't it drive you nuts watching something like that run away without you on board? And then what happens is, we end up doing the dog pile, don't we? We chase after it. It's just like dogs chasing cars. What are they going to do if they ever caught that thing? <laughs> right? What are they going to do? So we dog pile. We jump on board, and we know what happens at that point, right? Don't we? It causes pain. So we ultimately end up getting what we wanted to. So there we sit on the bench. We're riding the pine again. It happened again to me, doesn't it? All right? And then we start to blame, don't we? The market's rigged, or central bankers are killing this market, or the market's too high, it's too expensive, my account's too small, the commissions are too high. There's all these excuses out there. Guys, excuses are the nails used to build the house of failure, okay? So that's an old one from Jim Rohn, which still works to this day. Excuses are the nails to build the house of failure. So what if I told you, that it is possible to identify these setups in advance with a high degree of probability. That it does not require a large account to participate in these moves. 
that you can risk as little as $20 per trade plus commissions to participate in these trades. We do it all the time. That you do not need to watch every tick during the day. That you can do this while you're conducting business or having another job. You don't have to obsess over the market. You don't have to watch every tick to be part of these trades. That it maybe takes five minutes a day to identify setups with today's tools and manage your inventory. This is very low maintenance stuff. And I looked the other day, there's currently 464 stocks that we can effectively utilize this strategy with. There's more if you want to lower your standards, but the standards we use at Theotrade, there's about 464 stocks that we can use for this. Would you be interested? So we want to find setups that are doing something like this. Going sideways or basically consolidating. And that turn into moves like this that explode higher. This is what we're looking for. We're going to be looking for the trades that everybody else has given up on. Everybody else has given up on this chart because it's going sideways. It's gone boring. And so, therefore, everybody is chasing after the bright, shiny penny that's already starting to move. Well, meanwhile, we're doing the exact opposite. We're looking for stocks that are actually consolidating like this. Here's an example of a trade that we took recently. This is on Tiffany. Go figure, Tiffany. Yeah, the, the jewelry company, right? So perhaps there's somebody is figuring out that they may be in for stronger earnings going forward. Maybe there's more discretionary income coming down the road. So here was a trade where we took $140 of initial cost with commissions. So therefore, my 1R value, my risk unit on this trade was 140 bucks. That's the most that I could lose on this trade was 140 bucks. So we were in this trade for a 26 cent debit and after you know kind of a complex exit here, some at 66, some at 67, this gave us profits after commissions of 184 based on an initial risk unit of 140. So our multiple return was 1.31 or for those following at home, 131%. Whole time was nine trading days. Very, very typical. We don't have to be in this thing for the, all that long if we do the timing right. We don't have to put a huge amount of capital into this trade. So that was five contracts. Average cost per trade, per contract, was $26 plus commissions. Okay, very, very typical trade. Here's another one. Here's the spiders on December 5th. Okay, it's just kind of wandering around, consolidating, stuck in a range. Nobody's watching it anymore. Everybody assumes at that point that the big election bounce is already done with. Not us. Four days later, this is what it looked like. You know, another huge move in just a few days. And so in this trade, again, same kind of envelope that we're looking for, same kind of risk envelope, $105 initial cost with commissions. You can see that per contract cost was $19 plus commissions here. And these are fairly efficient trades. We're only talking about two options per contract. So it's not like a huge, multi-legged, very inefficient trade. So the initial risk unit for this trade was fully $105. $105, okay. Profits after commissions, $455. The R multiple return was 4.33 or 433%. Are these results typical? No, we don't see them all that often, but I wanted to open your eyes to what can be done with this type of trade in only six trading days, okay? Only six trading days. Very simple trade, very easy to manage. What we're looking at is essentially... You know, you guys have been to the beach before. You see these waves come in again and again and again, and they just never stop. Well, guess what? This is how stocks move. They move, then they consolidate. Then they move, then they consolidate. Then they move, then they consolidate. Okay, perhaps we'll get a larger time frame pullback at some point, and then they go right back into the same pattern again. They never stop moving like this. Okay, it's just a matter of understanding how they do move. 
And this is where the whale kind of comes in. The whale is something where if, if you're up here on the surface of the water, you don't see what's going on here. You don't see this whale swimming below the ocean. But there's a huge amount of mass to this. They displace an enormous amount of water, but you just can't see them. And it's not unlike one of these stocks that's going through a whale move. Nobody's paying any attention to it. Nobody can see it. But then suddenly what happens is you get the initial breach of the whale comes out of the water. Of course, everybody's reaction at that point is, wow, where did that come from? And this is what it looks like on a chart. It consolidates, and this is specifically when everybody is giving up on this, and then these lead to these big breakout returns. In this case, this is IBM. Here's some recent results to show with you. So I just wanted to show you guys that you know, a lot of these are, you know, just typical, very, these are more the conservative ones. We're pulling in 31%, 50%, 46%, 50%, 21%, 46%, 49%, 49 Here's some of the bigger ones, 85%, 132. Again, these are very typical, 28%, 47. Not all of these are winners, okay? Here's the losers. There's a loser right there, 100%. We lost all of the initial capital coming into this. But we said, okay, I am willing to, I know what my risk unit is for this. It was $192, and it didn't work out. So Walmart, in this case, you know, betrayed us. Here's Schlumberger betrayed us. It didn't work out. And this was actually a larger trade, risking $510 of capital for this trade. Didn't work out, okay? But still, you look at something like this with a profit factor like this, with a win rate like this, and all of a sudden you see a positive expectancy strategy that's risk managed. And again, this is something where we don't have to spend a lot of time every day trading this. We don't have to really, all we have to do is basically set up the conditions for what we want to find, have the system send it to us, we can evaluate it, just takes a few minutes every day, and then entering is actually very, very easy. Okay, so guys, uh, if you want to hold off on the questions, I'll be happy to answer all of your questions at the end of this. Otherwise, if I stop and answer questions all the way through this thing, I'll never get through tonight. And I want to make sure that you have enough time to, to finish shoveling out there on the East Coast. Okay, so now we know what it is and why we want to trade it. How do we find these? And under what market conditions do we find these? Now, I am not going to sit here and tell you that you can trade this for the rest of your life through every market, thick and thin, up and down, everything like that. There are specific conditions where it works best, like right now is one of them. Okay? So part two is what market conditions cause this and where do they work best in? 80% of the time, the overall market trends with a character known as quiet and trending. There's basically four different types of character, so I'll go through those tonight. Four different types of character, but the majority of the time, and certainly much of the time that we've seen since 2009, and actually it was almost exactly eight years ago that we bottomed out. What was that, March 6th, I think it was? 666 on the S&P. So this is where we have a linear, linear structured move. That's what we want. We want very predictable, very linear price behavior like now. Okay, so we don't want to fight tape like this when we are doing things like this. Okay, so this, this type of very linear kind of trending behavior where it's kind of stair-stepping through life like this. We don't want to be fighting with it and saying, you know, like, well, that this this price doesn't deserve to be up at this level, and, and I, I'm going to punish it, and I'm going to, you know, because eventually I'm going to be right. I don't want to punish the market. I don't want to short this, right? I don't want to be setting up high probability iron condors thinking, you know, well, all right, if I get an iron condor out far enough, that it'll be okay. Well, look, 2013 told me that it's not far enough right now. We're just not getting any kind of displacement on the wings of high probability iron condors right now. Now we actually can trade low probability condors around these types of consolidations, but that is another topic for another day. 
Okay, what I'm looking for is kind of the meat on the bone here. I'm looking for these breakouts from here. So this is a matter where we're actually identifying the character of the market and we're trying to trade along with it. We're not trying to fight it. We're not trying to, you know, bang that square peg into a round hole and say, by God, you know, this market has got to fit what I want it to do. No, we're just playing along with it. All right. So there are other types of market character that we want to avoid with this strategy. Okay. So corrective price action can come in several forms. So if we go into volatile and sideways character, and by the way, this is what we had pretty much from the end of 2014 into around the Brexit breakout of 2016. So we had this for about a year and a half, and I will, um, I will go on, on record as saying that this was a full correction. Corrections can come through time as well as price. This is volatile and sideways character. What we also see is volatile and trending character. And this is another code word for bear market. We don't want to be trading this type of strategy in a bear market. Do you realize that most of the candlesticks in a true bear market are actually still, in this case, they'd be white or green or whatever. They, they're positive candlesticks. Most of the candlesticks in a bear market are still positive, are still up days. It's just that when the dark days come, when the red days come along, they're so big that they wipe out weeks' worth of, of gains. You can see these, these strong little rallies, and boom, they're just taken out. So we don't, we don't want to be playing strategies like the ones that I'm showing you tonight with the whale trade in this type of character. But we don't have this character right now. We don't even have volatile and sideways character right now. We have quiet and trending behavior. So you can paddle upstream, you can fight the price action, you can, you know, damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. You know, I'm going to trade an iron condor no matter what happens. Believe me, I was one of those guys. It takes a lot of progress. It takes a lot of effort to make progress when you're paddling upstream like that. So I prefer to go with gravity like this guy. It's so much easier when you're going with the current, isn't it? So when we have quiet and trending uptrends, just it's just simple you know right it's we, we just we're just going for the signals we're just identifying the setups going along with them again and again and again okay so once you know what to look for or and this is a this is a little bit of foreshadowing here to scan for then once we identify what to scan for, we can identify this and say, okay, there we have another setup and another setup and another setup. And pretty soon what you notice is that they're all over the place. And pretty soon you find that you have more opportunity than you know what to do with. Which leads us to the next section. So now that we've identified what we're looking for, what it is, everything about it, what should we trade it with? Right? What should we trade it with? So it's hard to beat the endurance and simplicity of holding simple stock. I will be the first person to admit that if you had simple stock into trades like you know Amazon a few years ago, you can hold those things into perpetuity and they're not going to have any time value that you have to worry about. And you don't even have to worry about rolling them or anything like that. So you can also write options against these. You know, so in a perfect world, you identify the next Amazon, which is in a base, and you hold it, you know, into the sunset, right? But how easy is it to do something like that? There's two major problems with that approach right now. Number one, you have to have a big chunk of capital to be able to dedicate to a position like that you got to have a big chunk of capital, especially in today's market. So equities are not exactly cheap these days after this epic rally that's been fueled by quantitative easing and central bank policy and negative interest rates. Equities are not cheap today. This is why a lot of people are driving towards options because of the necessity, not just the flexibility. So not only is it a logistics issue of capital, but honestly, guys, it's risk. 
Holding stocks up at today's prices is a matter of risk. You're paying a fortune for these things. And what is high can go lower, as we all know. But we do have options, don't we? So instead of discussing some fancy option strategy, I'm not going to talk to you about the super sideways twisted butterfly or something like that. I'm not going to talk about some holy grail of all strategies that can work through any market. I'm going to spare you the bloviation. Right? I'm just going to break it down and be simple about this. There's a couple of simple strategies that will do the job for us. Believe it or not, this simple long call option. Now, this is going to be a short discussion, but the simple long call option could be used as a proxy for long stock. This is going to give us the most leverage and bang for buck that we're ever going to see. We all know that. Okay? So, if there with, with basically a VIX at about 12, if there was ever a time, ever a time to use long calls, this might be it. This might be it. It creates asymmetric leverage. That's a good thing and big returns if you're right. But, as we all know, we should always start our discussion with any kind of trade evaluation as to, well, wait a minute, how much could I lose with this first? That's what you always should be asking about any strategy. Question number one, how much can I lose? So, the two problems is there are many factors you have to get just, you have to thread the needle on these things. Not only do you have to time the move in terms of how much time that you, but you also have to time the velocity. You have to get the the implied volatility just right. Otherwise, you're going to be crushed out of the trade. You guys all know this, right? This is not as easy as it looks. Do you know any professional traders that are using long call options only? Okay. The risk is also somewhat high. You're paying a lot of money for that extrinsic time value. You could lose the entire thing. So even though it's a proxy for the stock, there's only it's a, it's a ticking time bomb. It's a melting ice cube. You guys know that, okay? But I mean, it's this is certainly possible to use a simple long call option for this. What I prefer though is the vertical call spread, the plain vanilla, very simple, very dependable vertical call spread. We can design this in a couple of different ways. We can be more aggressive. We can increase our reward to risk and reduce the cost, like some of the examples that I showed you. Or we can go to be more conservative, like the examples that I showed you that we're pulling in 20, 30, 40, 50%. More conservative, we increase the probability, and we simplify the management of the trade. We can actually neutralize the Greeks in a trade like this when we go conservative. So you can also use a mix of these on one setup if desired. You don't have to do any you know, anything like that. You can maybe add, you know, most of the position can be very conservative and add a couple of contracts of, of aggressive. You can add a blend to these depending on what you want to do. So the great thing is about the vertical spread is it doesn't matter what the price of the underlying stock is. It could be 50 bucks a share. It could be 1,200 bucks a share. It could be $3,000 a share. All we're doing is trading the difference between the two. That's what the spread is. So a conservative vertical spread should target about 50 to 60% return on carbon. So that's our target for that. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we take the easy gains and just book it and move along. The aggressive vertical spread should target at least 100% return on capital. Typically, we're setting these things up with a reward to risk of about 4 to 1. And so we want to get at least 100% when we can. So when we nail one of these things, let's, let's harvest it. So in all cases, the capital utilized in each trade should be no more than 2%, typically less than that, per trade. Not the whole account, but per trade, so that no one trade is going to hurt at all. We've got to be able to, to use that, what I call the, the Viking funeral approach for every trade. Set it on fire, push it away from the shore, let it do its job. If it sinks, okay, that's fine. You've already buried it, right? But if it comes back and pays off, terrific. So part four, how do we time this setup? How do we time this setup? 
Okay, just just put them on at random walk, at, like just keep throwing them on until they work, or should we be more efficient than that? So to understand how to trade this setup, it's important to know how stocks are moving in this type of market. Remember, we talked about this as quiet and trending. Stocks tend to move as far as they possibly can, and then usually a little bit further than that, and then they rest. And then they do it again, and then they repeat that cycle. They move as far as they possibly can in one direction, then they rest or move in the opposite direction for as far as they can, and then the cycle repeats again and again and again. Okay, boom, 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 like this one, which is IBM. So I find out a while ago this whole business of overbought and oversold that was shoved down my throat years ago when I was told, well, this is how technical analysis is performed is your most basic is an oscillator showing overbought and oversold. It doesn't work anymore. Perhaps sometimes we see oversold because bottoms are an event, but tops are a process. You're not going to have an overbought signal to give you anything. There's no edge in an overbought simple, especially in today's, in today's market, which is amped up, central banked, QE'd, negative interest rates out there. It just isn't the same thing, especially when you have like a VIX of 12. So overbought can remain seemingly forever in this market. You all know that. So over the years, I've determined that stocks move very similar to how we as people do. It's almost like an, a, an organism, right? So move as far as we can, then we rest, then we go again. So think about how somebody would tackle Mount Everest, right? What do they do? They start off down here at the base camp, they ascend to the next base camp. They spend some time there and acclimate themselves to the thinner air, get used to it, rest and recover, and then off they go to the next base camp. Repeat. Then they ascend to the next base camp. Sometimes they have to return back to the same base camp again because they've gone a little too far, a little too fast, and they need to reacclimate and then try again. So markets move very similar to how we were climbing Mount Everest. It's the same thing. Markets are just another organism. So think of a spring being wound up tightly until it jumps out of your hand. When it does that, we have these conditions like this where the stocks are just going nowhere. This is non-linear price action, right? And what it does is creates a very high indicator in this, which is what I call the fractal energy indicator also known as the CHOP index, right? So we have these signals where when we have this high degree, and think of, again, what I want you to think of here, the analogy is think of winding up a spring in your hand, and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter until finally it just flies out of your hand. It just can't contain that potential energy anymore. It turns potential into kinetic. You guys remember that from school? And it's the same thing. Just Newton's law is all over again in the market this time. So I use my fractal energy principles to help improve the probabilities of the trade. I want to see the stock in a larger time frame uptrend so that I'm trading with the current and not against it. Then look for a high energy value and a breakout from that range. So we can see these all over the place here. High levels of energy and a breakout from that range. High levels of energy in the red break out from that range. Do all of them work out? No. Sometimes they get hauled back down again. They have to reconsolidate, just like those climbers that tried to go up to the next base camp and weren't ready yet. You know, there is a supply-demand element to everything, of course, but we're, this is an astoundingly accurate way to evaluate a market. So the conservative trade entry is to wait on the price to break out, or... If we are convinced that it is eventually going to break out in that direction, if we have a very strong trend, then the aggressive trade is to initiate the trade while the price is still inside the consolidation pattern and allow yourself to be taken along. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both ways. You have to find a way that works best for you, your sense of risk and reward, your sense of how you trade like that, whether you're more aggressive or more conservative.
Now we lead to part five. So we're trucking right along here. I hope you're able to uh, fill in all the answers in your workbook. You're staying, you're staying current. I see a lot of questions coming in. I see you're, you guys are keeping Don and Jeff really busy. All right, I will be taking questions at the end of this. So part five, how do we find these candidates? Do they just pop out of thin air? Does somebody email them to me or something like that? Do I, have, do I get out my divining rod from the closet and go wander around the backyard until they, they, they find themselves on a letter or something like that? Well, the old school method of doing this was set up a fixed watch list and just go through this thing weekly, daily, hourly. So, you know, we'd set up a, a, a linked watch list. So we get the watch list linked to the chart, and we just sit there and flip through these things all the time. And then magically, once in a while, we'd stumble into one and we'd say, hey, look what I found. And we trade it and we do okay. But half the time, it was more of a case of, hey, there it went. I missed it. The problem is searching 4,800 charts by hand. In this case, I scanned on all optionable stocks and I came back with 4,859. That's impossible. You're not going to be able to sort 4,800 charts by hand, no matter how efficient that you are. Okay? So the problem with that method is that we're human. We are human. We make mistakes. We forget. Life gets in the way. We get distracted. We step away. We miss. We miss. We miss the trade. It's also a lot of work. So now we have all of the processing power of the big boys at our disposal. So you remember all this. Oh, well, the big boys have all these mainframes and CPU power and all of this other stuff, and we don't have this as retail traders, so they're getting the opportunities. And we, okay. So now it's come down to high-frequency trading versus retail traders. And honestly, that's a space that we don't really care about. It's not going to hurt us. All it does is increase liquidity. So now we have, we're on the same playing field as the big boys in terms of finding opportunities. I can program my scanner to look for this high-energy signal in daily charts, multiple time frames, right? So we can layer probabilities on top of each other here. So we're doing stuff that nobody could even dream of doing just a couple of years ago. So we're going to be looking for things like this. This is what I call my fractal charts, where we're looking at different multiple time frames. So we're looking at things in multiple. So we're stacking opportunities and stacking probabilities on top of each other. This is what I find that, that bites most retail traders, is that they'll take a daily signal without understanding the context of what's going on at the larger time frames. It's critical that you become a multiple time frame analysis or analyst to be able to effectively figure out what's going on here. So if you're sick of being entering at the top of a trend because it's a larger time frame pullback, then you need to learn multiple time frame analysis. So we're going to be using these, and then what I can do is once I understand the context of what I'm looking for, I can simply program the breakout level on my chart. I can be alerted when it's time for me to take action on this. It's so simple. I can also be emailed or texted. If I want, if I want to really ruin my life, I can turn my phone into a, a notification center, right? And there's all kinds of every scan that I've got can be programmed into there to alert me, to tell me what to do. And we can also set up what's called a dynamic watch list. This is extremely powerful, right? So watch lists don't have to be fixed. They can be dynamic. They can, they can be updated as the scan produces new candidates. Every three seconds. This is crazy stuff, guys. So, with some appropriate criteria to help filter these scans, I'm only informed of the very best candidates that meet my criteria. So I can eliminate 99% of this noise and just be presented with the very best of the best of the best. That has a very high probability of working out. So, let's finish up here. Let's put it all together. Can you believe this? This is an aircraft carrier put together with Legos. This is this guy's entire life in front of him here to put something like that together. So 
Our job, fortunately, is nowhere near that complex. Number one, first, we're going to look for the right overall market conditions that support stair-stepping behavior to quiet and trending character, like right now. Number two, next we start by scanning against only the very best of the 4,800 optionable stocks. We don't want to be really looking at all 4,800 optionable stocks. Some of them are what we call roach motels. You can get into them, but you can't get out. The liquidity is very poor, so we have minimum standards that we trade against, and we share that with all the members at Theotrade. Number three, we look for very specific technical conditions where we have a high degree of consolidation in multiple time frames. So a signal within a signal within a signal, multiple time frame signal coiling out for a big breakout. Number four, we set up dynamic watch lists to monitor, have them alert us when conditions are hit, and look for confirming behavior on our chart. Yes, we can use our brains to be able to screen these based on our experience. Number five, we can choose either an aggressive or a conservative vertical spread depending on our stance or account size. You know, perhaps our account size isn't so big and we can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. We can also choose a style of entry to match our own personality. Number six, we can limit capital exposure on any one trade to the point where we don't care. We honestly don't care. And frankly, this is just a little editorial here on the side here. If you cannot reach a capital position size on, on a position where you truly don't care, then you will more than likely make the wrong decision managing that trade. This is why you've gotten to the point where it's like you make the wrong decision because you care too much. All of a sudden you realize that it is truly risk capital. I mean, trading risk capital positions is an unnatural act for us to do. And so don't make it any harder on yourself by trading larger than you should be. So limit capital exposure to the point where you just don't care. Number seven, we delay entry until we have a very high probability of the trade working out. We let the trades come to us. You've heard that expression before. How do you do it? We let the trades come to us. We know exactly what we're looking for. So from a technical price and a volatility basis, we know what the conditions are. And then number eight, once filled, we immediately set up a good till cancel limit order to take us out of the trade at our profit target. Okay. So in a perfect world, we set it up, set that up, boom, it fires. We don't touch it after that point. Does that happen all the time? No. But a good portion of the time, it does. Okay. Let's finish up here. I've just told you everything you need to know to start applying concepts of your own for the whale trade. I've just given you everything that you need to know. But if you're like me, you want to get it right. You want to get right to it as the edge is in the details that we've learned over the years. So trading is about answering the what ifs, right? Don't you find that once you learn about a strategy, it seems so simple and then you go to do it by yourself and all of a sudden it just, it feels different. It feels awkward. It feels strange. Wait a minute. This isn't what I learned. This market's different than the one I learned on. No, it's not. It's just that you're, you're looking at past applications where you're not trading on the hard right edge. So how do I evaluate this study in multiple fractal time frames? It's not something you read from a book. What makes a good signal? What makes a bad signal? How do I interpret the fractal energy signal in the context of price movement? How can I create a scan against this? So Theotrade, we're here to answer these questions. How can I filter out these highest liquidity stocks? We provide the list to our customers. How can I provide, or how can I improve the probabilities of my scan results? What type of spread is the best to trade based on the opportunity? Aggressive or conservative? Which one should I pick? I don't know. How can I be notified when my scan produces a result? How do you do that? And how can I create the same framework that Theotrade uses? I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I just want to do what you guys do at Theotrade. How can you do that?
Okay. Well, this is what we're here for, guys. We have the answers. We have the answers to your trade-related questions. We build strategies with definitive criteria. Anybody that's that knows about has worked with me before knows that I'm into definitive criteria. I've taken all the uh, the the angst of being an engineer and translated it into my trading career. Right. So. This is what I believe in. I believe in defining things that, yes, it is some art, but it's also science, and we can, we can set up the framework for these. So every unique variable that you're going to encounter, we define. So we do it live every day in our chat room. This is not something that we just do as a paper exercise or something that you can buy off the Internet that was written 10 years ago, which does not work now. This is something that we do live every day in our chat room with our customers. This is just the beginning of the many variables you're going to face when set up a trading framework for the whale trade using fractal energy trading. It's a simple concept, but you got to have the recipe for it. So the secret's in the sauce. So if you're if you're a self-directed investor, maybe you're saying, hey, I can, you know, thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. I can figure out all the details on my own. Really? How much capital are you willing to risk before you, you say, all right, maybe I need a little bit of help here? So the corresponding criteria requires contextual understanding to properly apply. How do you use those multiple time frames? We've been doing this for years using this methodology. And my gift is to be able to give it to you in a very simple to understand format. So how would you like the criteria to add this to your trading? If, you, if your answer is yes, then... Please join me this Saturday. I am giving uh, the whale trade class this Saturday from 9 to 12 Central Time, which is 10 to 1 Eastern Time. I will be your instructor. So it's archived immediately. It's available indefinitely. All materials are made available immediately as soon as we get done. Okay, so you can actually rewind as I'm talking, although I wouldn't do that. Now, we, we also kind of overcommit on these things. So there's a five-part, five-hour class of fractal energy trading. So if you say, well, I don't get this fractal thing that you're talking about. Well, there you go. You get to work with me on this. There's a five-part series for this. You also get the study. We currently have this for Thinkorswim. We've also got it written for TradeStation, although I can't really help you with implementing that. But we've got the video for how to do that. We've also got the Whale Trade Stock Scanner. So all that stuff that I talked about with scanning, got it done. It's, you know, all you need to do is import and apply it. And here's the most exciting part of this. You can actually trade with us for a full week starting next week. So five days, you're going to have full access to all the sessions that we do, all the mentors that we do. These guys, and I went through their names before, but if you want to look at the... Um, I'll bring that up in a second. So you can actually get credit for this. If you buy this class, you can actually get full credit for this to a 12-month Total Theo membership. So this can, this can apply towards going forward on this. So if you want to trade with us next week, you can see the schedule that we have. So we do just about 30 hours a week, just about 30 hours a week live of this, right? So if you want to follow Don Kaufman, if you want to follow myself, if you want to follow the NASDAQ futures guy, if you want to understand charting and technical analysis with Jeff Bierman, you can listen to us all five days next week. That's included for the same price of 197 So all you got to do for this, let me bring this down, is go out to this site. Yeah, let me bring the, the site down here. So if you go to theotrade.com slash whale, okay, this is what you're going to see. Theotrade.com slash whale. Theotrade.com slash whale, okay, and we should type this into the, uh, I'm going to send this out to everybody here. Okay, so for 197 if you add this to the cart again, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get all the methodologies. You're going to understand how to apply multiple time frame fractal energy signals. You're going to get the study. You're going to get the scans for 197. Are you kidding? Right? So don't forget about the bonuses here. 
The bonus is a five-hour class, which you get access to tonight if you want. So you can study up on this. You can get ready for the Saturday class so that you're really ready. Remember, repetition is the mother of skill. So you get started tonight on this. You'll be ready for Saturday, and you'll be ready to trade next week if you want. Okay? It's a fractal energy study for Thinkorswim Trade Station, whale stock scanners. Get everything, and don't forget, you can trade with us. So once again, that is theotrade.com slash whale slash whale. I'd like to see you there next Friday next Friday. And by the way, for those of you that just happen to be listening that are Theo Trade, Total Theo customers, this is included in your subscription. All right? So if you're already a Total Theo Trade subscriber, this is included in your subscription. Okay, so with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune in to the chat window here and see what you guys are looking for. What questions can I answer for you right now? <laughs> 